Sarah Armour, and I study the science of natural and environmental systems at Cornell University. One of my favorite things to do is to go outside in the winter and watch nature. Today, I'm gonna share with you some of the cool ways that animals have adapted to survive winter. Winter is kind of harsh. You have lots and lots of snow. Everything's super cold. Any water that's available is gonna be completely frozen and food and shelter is really hard to find. Migration is an animal behavior that many of us are very familiar with, where all of the animals in a population move to a warmer climate to avoid the worst of winter. If you're an animal that migrates, moving to one of these warmer climates makes your life so much easier because you can avoid those harsh, cold winter conditions. Common birds that you might know that fly south for the winter are Canada geese, warblers, red-headed woodpeckers, Baltimore orioles, and ducks. Many people our grandparents' age head to places in the southeastern United States, like Florida, for the winter. It is important to remember that not all migratory destinations are tropical, and not all of them are even very warm. Snow geese spend the summer months way up above the Arctic Circle where they breed, and then they migrate south during the winter to the continental US. But it's much warmer than where they came from, above the Arctic Circle, where winter temperatures can get as low as negative 50 degrees Fahrenheit. On a cold day, it's pretty nice to just bundle up and take a nice nap inside. Hibernation is where animals become dormant or inactive during the coldest months, where the hibernating animals use way less energy and can stay cozy, hidden, and safe throughout the winter. So why would some animals want to sleep through the winter? If you're an animal that eats insects, winter weather makes it really hard to find food because insects definitely are not active in cold weather. And if you are an animal that eats plants, winter is a difficult time to get food because most plants are covered in snow. If you are an animal that eats other, smaller animals, winter can still make it hard to find food because little animals are often hidden in their winter homes away from the cold. By hibernating, an animal is able to conserve energy over the entire winter by having low metabolic activity, low oxygen use, and low body. Insectivorous bats, those are bats that eat insects, are famous for going into really, really long periods of hibernation through the winter. They spend the winter months hibernating in caves where they're sheltered from those harsh winter conditions. Ground squirrels, like prairie dogs, woodchucks, and marmots, are also very good hibernators, and they spend the winter months hidden in their underground burrows. Many bears dig a den or a small cave in a hillside before winter begins. They must store up energy in the form of fat so that they can survive the winter. What about an amphibian, which can't maintain a steady body temperature? How do they survive winter? Many amphibians spend winter buried in the mud at the bottom of ponds and wetlands where they become dormant for long periods of time. These amphibians have lots of glucose, a type of sugar, in their blood which acts as a natural antifreeze. This antifreeze protects their organs by actually lowering the temperature at which their body freezes. Because of this chemical adaptation, in many northeastern frog species, these animals are able to withstand temperatures below freezing without harm. But what if an animal can't fly, or is too small, or is too slow to migrate? How can those animals survive winter? I like to think of this group of animals as the hardcore group that really like to live on the edge and simply tough it out through the winter. In order for an animal to remain active through the harsh winter conditions, they must have certain physical adaptations. Animals that live in cold conditions must conserve body heat. Most animals that must survive through the winter have coats of thick fur or feathers. Mammals grow thick fur coats in preparation for winter, and this helps them conserve heat during the coldest months. 
some mammals also have a special kind of inner fur that's really fluffy and helps to keep them extra warm. One of the cool mammals that does this is the musk ox. Beavers and reindeer also have two layered fur coats. However, the beaver's outer coat is covered in oil, keeping the beaver's inner fur from getting wet while the beaver swims. On the other hand, the hairs in a reindeer's outer coat are hollow and air-filled, helping to insulate the reindeer in cold weather. Many cold climate mammals have blubber, like polar bears and seals, as well as some birds, like penguins. The blubber storage also is a way for animals to have a supply of energy to use during the winter when food is more scarce. Animals that rely on blubber for insulation, as well as for energy, will eat large amounts of fatty foods during the summer months in order to pack on blubber. In cold weather, your fingers and your toes are often the first part of you to get cold. This is because there's lots of surface area on your fingers and toes, and lots of heat can escape through your skin. One very good way of keeping warm is to minimize the amount of heat that is lost by minimizing body surface area. Cold climate animals do this by having compact and rather squat body forms with small, stout limbs, ears, and tails. Penguins are a perfect example of the compact body form with their short, stubby appendages. The snowshoe hare faces the challenge of sinking into the deep snow as it hops along. To combat this challenge, the hare has very wide hind feet that act as snowshoes to redistribute weight so that they remain above the snow. Polar bears, lynx, mountain lions, and bobcats also have very wide feet that act in a similar way to that of the snowshoe hare and keep them from sinking into the very deep snow. Some animals change color in the winter to help them blend in with their surroundings. This camouflage helps prey hide from their predators, and it helps predators keep out of sight from their prey. Caribou will avoid attracting the attention of predators by changing color from brown in the summer to white in the winter. Many animals conserve heat by huddling, a behavior where a group of animals cuddle together for warmth. Male emperor penguins are famous for doing this in an effort to stay warm in the unforgiving conditions of the Antarctic. While penguins are very well known for this huddling behavior, they are not the only animals that love to cuddle for warmth. Many rodents and tree squirrels and even some snakes are known to huddle as well. Like many cold climate mammals, we have a layer of fat that acts as insulation for our bodies. As humans, we can use our ingenuity, invention, and technology to help us stay warm during the winter. We rely on things like homes for shelter and heating systems for warmth. And while we don't have the winter fur coat of a polar bear, we can stay pretty warm with big puffy jackets. Think of some examples of animals you might see as winter approaches and throughout the coldest months. You might see squirrels sneaking food from a bird feeder so that they can keep up their energy in the cold winter. You might see some fluffy birds and puffed up squirrels with thick coats to keep them warm. Maybe if you're really observant, you can see the tracks of animals that are active through the winter. If you look up, you might see geese migrating in the fall and spring. Even in your own backyard, it's easy to see how animals have adapted to winter. All you have to do to see these cool winter adaptations is look around.